Hello everyone and welcome to yet another video. So today I'm going to play Simon Agdestein, who happens to be Norway's fourth best player. Uh, the problem is he doesn't have enough time to actually play the longer games that we want to do, so we're going to play a couple of 3 plus 2 games instead. So here we go. I've sent him a request for 3 plus 2. <sighs> and probably we are able to get that. So, while we wait for Simon to uh, accept the challenge, because <laughs> he accepted the the previous challenge, but that was, as you can see, a 15 plus 10, and it, he doesn't have time for that right now. And I can I can totally understand that. So yeah. Anyways, <laughs> this is kind of weird, but um, we are trying our best. Yeah, so he's saying that he didn't get up the challenge. So then we're going to ask again. There we are. So yeah, <laughs> this is going to be fun, I believe. I believe so indeed. Let's go for E4. So we're not going to learn much from these games. Uh, bl some blitz games is not what we want. But I'm going to play the Roy Lupus here. And let's just see what this Grandmaster can tell us about <laughs> uh, this opening. And he's going to test us in this opening as well. Because I have no clue what I'm doing right now. But okay, so far so good, it seems. Okay, so now he's going to play knight a5 or, or d6. I'm going to play h3 myself to stop bishop to g4. And probably, yeah. Uh, so let's just, let's just play this move now, I think. Actually, let's play c3 so that he has to take. And then let's take... Let's take back with our pawn here. Let's play d3. Knight to d2. So this bishop he actually got to. And I maybe rook to e1 is a bit bad because black is able to actually capture that. Or h3, maybe that is the bad move. Maybe c3 first. <laughs> I haven't studied any of these lines. Uh, I just happen to have read some short articles about the the Roy Lupus. And that's kind of my problem. I don't like to study openings because I think it's it's um it's not giving me much. Okay. There we are. I'm gonna play bishop to e three, trying to open up with d four later. And he wants to play c four himself, right? That's pretty much what he's saying. <laughs> oh, he plays d4. I'm in d5. So now I'm in big trouble, it seems. Okay. Let's place our knight to g3. Let's go there. And if he takes, and I take back, um, I think I can take that knight. After bishop captures there, I can take here. Yeah, so he doesn't do that. Um, okay. I don't exactly know what I want to do here. <laughs> okay, let's take. Let's take on d5. And probably knight captures. Probably, yeah. Then we're going to go here to get rid of this bishop and trying to um, yeah so he plays bishop back to f8 mm -hmm. 
Now, where do we want to put our queen? Probably on c1. Yeah, let's put it on c1. My thinking is I can bring this bishop back to d2. <clears throat> but this is kind of very hard. I'm low on time and he is just pushing so hard. Although this is a boring type of position, he has the initiative here. I don't think I have any chance at all. Let's say he plays f6. Um, maybe not even f6. h6, yeah. Bishop to d2. And that move, <laughs> I really don't have much of a choice. I don't want to give away this bishop as well. That's the thing. Uh huh. So now he's telling me that you are in for it, man. You're in for it. <laughs> okay. Let's try to do this. Let's try to undouble our pawns. I, I, I'm guessing he's not going to take that. He's just going to move his knight. Probably knight to b6 or knight back to e7. If he moves it back to f6, I have at least stopped his rook from getting into g6 right away. Yeah, knight to b6, as I thought. <laughs> so, can we do this? I'm going to go ahead and do that, so that he has to protect this somehow. So, bishop to d6, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, okay, so he takes there. That's probably a good idea. Mm. I want to take there so bad, <laughs> but after the rook captures, um, I don't really have anything because even if I had queen to f4, he can take there with check and probably win my queen in the process, so that's just terrible. So yeah, nothing there, <laughs> nothing at all. Uh-huh. So now I'm really really messing this up aren't I it's kind of fun though it's kind of fun okay let's take here let's give him that rook captures d3 and let's go here and let him take on b3 that's that's not a problem I think right now aha double attack on the rook and the pawn that's nice um and if I play this move, he can actually take that. Um, okay. So what what do we play? Let's just go back and hope for the best after queen captures here. Um, but I, I'm totally fucked here. <laughs> so fucked. It's nice to see how his coordination just seemed like, uh, like it was coming from nowhere that attack. But I did not think about Bishop captures f3 um, at the time. Let's go here. Let's just try to get some space for our pieces. Yeah, yeah, this is terrible. So freaking terrible. And he can take there. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this is over. Let's just resign. Okay, so that's uh, that's it. And I'm going to ask for a rematch right away. Um, and here we go. Okay, let's play e5 then. Let's play knight to f6. And let's see how a Grandmaster plays against this line. I don't think I've ever seen a Grandmaster play this line before, actually. Ever. But he seems to know his stuff quite alright. <laughs> yeah, let's go here. And probably Rook E8 and Rook uh, Knight to F8.
Yeah, let's go to g6. I don't have any problems with that. Let's play c6 to stop his knight from getting in to d5 or b5. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of asking for it. <laughs> I'm kind of asking for it, aren't I? Okay. Um, yeah. So, mm, I should get this bishop out somehow. Uh, but kind of, I'm kind of too cramped right now. Let's play d5. Let's just play d5. Let's see where that leads us. Leads us. Yeah. So he he stops everything in this position. So I'm gonna play bishop to d7, or am I gonna play something else? Uh, if it weren't for this knight, I could actually have taken here, probably. Okay. I'm going to keep that as an option later. Uh, right now I need some development. <clears throat> and he's not going to take, like, that is... I think that is a Grandmaster 101. Like, don't take, just keep the tension. <laughs> keep the freaking tension. Okay, so if I take, he takes back with his pawn, and maybe I can go here. Maybe I can go to e4. So takes, takes, going to e4, knight captures, bishop captures. Uh, I mean, pawn captures, bishop captures, and then what do we play? Um, h6? Nah. Nah. Um, so let's go here instead. And I don't think he wants to trade that knight for this d7 bishop. That d7 bishop, bishop is so terrible. And I'm down on the clock as well like over a minute that's really fun <laughs> okay f4 he is really going for the attack and he has every right to do so I mean he's a grandmaster he's much much better than I am than anyone that I know actually uh, for God's sake what am I going to do here? Am I going to play this? Yes, I am. And I'm so low on time that I actually have to play faster now. Uh huh. So let's take here. Now, maybe take that, but it doesn't lead anywhere, does it? It doesn't lead to anything. Let's go here. And if knight here, I'm going to sacrifice the exchange. I have to. So, yeah. <laughs> This is it, the apocalypse. <laughs> and I'm so low on time as well. This is just terrible. <laughs> Maybe I should have gone for this before. Okay. There's nothing, no moves I can find that is, is actually any good. <laughs> oh my goodness down to 10 seconds I have 2 seconds increment that's not going to hold it that's not going to do anything but he can't move this 
uh, knight right now because this bishop is hanging. So yeah, I am gonna have to take that if he plays knight captures d7. Kind of forced to. <laughs> Probably he's just sitting there in his own chair in Stavanger right now and laughing his head off. <laughs> and I wouldn't blame him. I would not blame him. Like, what am I doing playing this amateur player? Why did I agree to this? It's too easy, man. Too easy. <laughs> I have to take. I, I don't have any other option. Let's go here. Probably g3. Maybe that's a really good move. So what am I going to do after g3? f6? Okay, he does that instead. That's cool. Okay. I'm really asking for it now. Fuck me. Yeah, I'm I'm dead lost. So I'm asking him how much time he has left because he needs to go do some serious things for Norway chess today as well. But okay. <sighs> I'm just gonna call him up. So let's... Um, Let's get Simon on the phone here. There we are. And there's, it doesn't seem like he is connected or something. I'm not entirely sure. What this is. Hey, person du ringer er ikke til stede for øjeblikket, men du kan gerne lægge en en besked til. Okay, so he was not available right there. Um, that's kind of bad or sad. <laughs> okay, let's try to call him one more time. But it doesn't seem like he is actually online. What is up with that? He is online. <laughs> but maybe he doesn't have the time to actually take make a chat with us. Maybe there's something wrong with his Skype connection settings or something. Okay. No. So he's not answering. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I've played against Norway's fourth greatest player or strongest player. He is like <laughs> when he was uh, at it at his best. He was like number sixteen or seventeen in the world back in 87 maybe 88 and that is just truly amazing that someone can actually be that that strong <laughs> but okay um, Simon is a really great player he is a teacher of many young talents here in Norway he runs the chess section of the 
Norwegian top um, sports high school, I think. I think it's called something like that. And also, Seaman was the former trainer and coach for Magnus Carlsen before he before he became too good for Seaman, I think. But that was one of the questions I were going to ask Seaman. And he calls me right now. Okay. Okay. Hello, Simon. Hi. Hey. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. That's good. That's really good. Um, I'm. I'm just wondering. Um, did you at the fir- in the first game, um, at some point think he knows what he's doing? Because I did not. <laughs> mm, um, if I knew what I was doing. Yeah, if you if if it looked as if I knew what kind of opening we were playing here, because I knew it was some kind of Spanish. But after That's I true. played, after you played d six and I played um, h three, like knight a f- a four is just killing my bishop there on b three. Yes, you forgot to defend the uh, to defend your bishop. Yeah, so uh, I, I was com- combining two elements of an article that I read earlier about the Spanish uh, that states that you should play h3 after your opponent plays d6 but in this case i actually forgot about my bishop because i have to play c3 maybe is that correct you have to defend your you have to keep your spanish bishop yeah if i should take away your spanish bishop then uh, i take away your the sting of the, of your position mm-hmm. it's not like uh, you're worse or anything it's just that uh, uh, your your best piece is, piece uh, uh, will be gone exactly Thank you so much for that. Um, it's it's very interesting to play against you because you have this um, this nice style of playing. Like the attack is coming basically out of nowhere. You're just um, like running over in the position. <laughs> um, yes, I tried to play thematical and a little bit slow. I'm not sure I played very well, but. Um... <clears throat> Um, it doesn't take much to crush me anyways. Uh, yeah, I was kind of just playing sensible moves and uh, and you helped me a little bit by letting me play d5 easily. Uh, I thought perhaps you, sh- you were about to go with the knight to g3 where it often goes. And then yeah, it in, in the second game. d5 because it was uh, hanging on e5 I think. And um, so I had to, would have had to prepare it a little bit more. But I'm not sure if c5 was that good actually, because you could uh, then simply play c4 and prevent d5 forever. Yeah. And yeah. And just put a knight on d5. True. And uh, and you're not worse, uh, but I'm not worse either. And as and as black, I'm okay with. Uh, but I think uh, c5 for me wasn't wasn't really that ambitious. Because if you want to, you could kind of close the position with c4. But uh, when you let me play d5, um, the position won't be closed and then closed any longer. Uh, the bishop on e3 is not particularly good place there. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, that uh, that's why you don't really de- develop that bishop so quickly because you don't really have a very good place for it. Yeah. So you tend to focus on other things before developing the bishop, like uh, either to play c3 or d c3 and d4, and uh, first of all and foremost perhaps send the knight to g3, which is the normal plan, and then see where the bishop on c1 belongs. Exactly. But uh, it became a little bit special now because the bishop on your white square bishop was gone, but still the same thematical motives. But um, as uh, you're playing a GM, not being a GM yourself, uh, or me being a GM, uh, kind of feeling I have to beat you. You uh, have I to. Should, <laughs> I, shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't really allow you to play C4 and, and just close the position. It will be quite difficult for me to, to make progress then. Yeah. Uh, because the only break left is uh, F5, and that's not so easy to... Uh, manage actually so i think you're quite okay if you play c4 there yeah so knight to e3 and up to d5 i would start to get low on time i think in that position 
Yes, and I eventually got love on time, which I, of course, exploited <laughs> uh, by playing quite fast myself. That's just and, the nature uh, of things, right? You have to do that to really stress your opponent. Isn't that some kind of um, a GM thing that you learn over the years? When you when your opponent is low on time, just try to play as uh, fast as possible. Or but uh, remember to play. Is- Good Time move. is very, very, very important, especially in Blitz. Yeah, true. That is so true. So, yeah, team months said that one minute on the clock in the old-fashioned Blitz, that meant 5-0, five, five mm-hmm. minutes on the clock. Yeah. There weren't the digital clocks at that time. Uh, <laughs> then one minute on the clock was kind of, was a smart, yeah, worth a pawn on the position. Mm-hmm. So basically sacrifice a pawn if you, you're one minute ahead on time. Cool. <laughs> I played against Mikael Tal once uh, back in the old days with the old fashioned clock, and he said he played incredibly fast. Wow. He was maybe the best blitz player in the world, and he just sacrificed a piece and, and crushed me. Then I was at my peak too, so uh, <laughs> just took on H3. I didn't understand a thing. Wow. Uh, I took back with a G pawn, it was a Benoni, and he kept on playing fast and, uh, and outplayed me. But um, so so uh, the time element is uh, is much more important than uh, uh, you may think, especially in blitz, of course. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was hoping to get in some um, some longer games against you, but you don't have the time because you're working on the. Is it the Norway Altibox Chess um, tournament right now, or are you a? It is. You, it is. Yeah. So, so you, I'm kind of uh, not really able to play. Uh, that much, unfortunately. No, and I totally understand that. That is uh, that is fair. <laughs> you you have a job to do. That's basically it. Like I'm just doing this for fun, and it was so wonderful to have to get a chance to play you again. I know that. Uh, like I, I have to ask you this one question um, before you go, if you have the time. Um, do you remember when I was at your school, thirteen or fourteen years ago? <laughs> yes, uh, I I must admit the memories are a bit vague, but uh, uh, I remember it. I you do, do that? Okay, cool. Yes, <laughs> because I I had one follow up question for that because I get. Do you remember that I had a present to you? Um, no, I must admit I don't. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I I bought an after a chocolate to you. Uh, yeah. And and I I was so uh, so delighted to have to get to uh, be with you that day um, or those days I don't remember it was one day or two days. Um, can't remember exactly actually. No, me neither. But okay. Anyhow, um, so once you left your office that um, that evening, I <laughs> I sat down with your students and asked them um, why you didn't take with you the chocolate, <laughs> and they said uh-huh. told me. No, he doesn't like chocolate. <laughs> oh, did I? That was very impolite, wasn't it? But I do like chocolate. You do like chocolate. Okay, so I have finally found the answer to that question then. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I'm not trying to do anything. Uh... That was very thoughtful of you bringing chocolate. That's much more than any of my students would ever even think about. <laughs> because Actually. they started to... Eat, a, eat away from that chocolate and that's why right. I asked uh, right. So, right. so yeah <laughs> but then I know <laughs> okay uh, thank you thank you so much for um, joining me in on this um, video it's gonna it's gonna be awesome to see how the reactions from especially the Norwegian uh, people is gonna be when they see that you crushed a 1900 whoa <laughs> yes it's a pleasure be meeting you what it was a pleasure playing you and me and talking to you. Thank you so much. Good, uh, good luck with your pro- project. Thank you so much. Have a good day and good luck with the Norwegian ch- uh, Norway chess. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Okay, so that was Simon Eidestein. Um And yeah, you couldn't see much there, uh, I know. But <laughs> basically what happened is... We went through the first game. Uh, the second game, I I didn't really want to ask too many questions from him because it I got totally crushed in that position for out of the opening. And yes, he knows how to, 
A GM knows very well how to play against knight f6 in move 2. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining and watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, ask them in the comments below. And if you do want to play against me yourself, then send me a message. And as always, bye bye.